Hey everyone, it's Steve from Network Advisor. In today's video, I'm going to do a brief side-by-side -side comparison of TP-Link's EAP660HD Wi-Fi 6 access point against the Ubiquiti Unify U6LR. Now you may recall that I did a side-by-side -side with the U6LR once before in a different video, so this is that same unit. Now I do have to let you know that while I'm not being compensated for this video, I did declare it as a sponsored video, and that is because TP-Link sent me the uh, access point of theirs and asked me to do this review. All right, let's get started. Omada EAP660HD. Something that stands out to me right away is that it's got a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, not all access points come with those and even though they're supposed to be AX the backhaul isn't fast enough to keep up with the supposed AX speeds. Okay, as we unpack the TP-Link, you've got your typical UFO type of form factor, which is typical for most access points these days. It's got a nice weighty feel to it. Uh, so there's our 2.5 gig connector and also the external power. We've got this nice venting going on. I kind of like that, that venting that they've got there for the heat dissipation. All right, what else is in the box? Uh, your standard hardware drywall mollies, some more hardware. And this little plate here, this goes on the surface and you use that hardware that I just showed you to mount this to like a ceiling or a wall. And then there's like kind of a click to fit turn type of connection between the plate and the access point. There's also an external power supply. So this is going to be good for environments where you don't have power over ethernet, but do consider that you may not have power in the ceiling. And quick installation guide. All right, now this is an unboxing I did for a previous video several months ago where I was reviewing a Ubiquiti against another access point. I do like the way that they package this. It's got a nice presentation, almost kind of the way Apple you know, takes a lot of attention to the way they, you know, package their uh, their products. So again, the UFO feel. Now you remove this little rubberized cover and it's got access to the uh, Ethernet connection. Now that's just a one gig Ethernet connection. All right, so then there's no place there for power either. So power has to come through the Ethernet. And then you've got this like kind of mounting kit. So you've got this template with like a little level on it which I guess would make sense if you're going to mount it on the wall. And then there's this steel plate with some instructions on it. And then also another ring. And I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't actually do the full steel plate installation. So I've yet to really go through that whole process. And then there's this kind of cutely packaged um, set of additional mounting hardware. It's a little tricky to get open here, but... Once you get that open, see it's got like these different screws and those little those little uh, tile grid uh, connectors there. Those are handy for drop tile ceilings. And then a warranty registration card. All right, before we connect these to the network and get into some speed testing and so forth, let's take a look at some of the physical characteristics you're going to want to be aware of before you make a purchase decision on one of these. So the first thing, let's take a look at the size. They're roughly the same diameter. The TP-Link is maybe a little bit bigger. All right, and then in terms of thickness, the Ubiquiti is, oh, maybe about two inches thick, where the TP-Link is about... Oh, maybe almost three inches thick. So it's a little bit a little bit thicker. But now when they hang these from the ceiling, it probably doesn't make that much of a difference. Now let's take a look at some of the connections because there's an important point I want to make. Now pay attention here because this is going to be a big deal. The TP-Link is capable of running on either a power adapter or power over Ethernet. The Ubiquiti is only capable of using power over Ethernet. Now that's not a strike against the Ubiquiti. I'm just pointing it out because in most professional environments, PoE is a pretty common 
feature of their infrastructure, so that would not be a big deal. However, if you're going to be putting this in a home network and you do not have a power over Ethernet capable switch, this will be a showstopper for you on the Ubiquity. Okay, so the reminder is PoE only, PoE or separate power supply. Also, the backhaul or the Ethernet connection that goes back to your wired infrastructure. This one is one gigabit. This one is 2.5 gigabit. Now keep in mind, many of the switches that are out there are still limited at one gigabit, in which case either one of these would be about the same performance. However, if you do have a switch that's capable of multi-gig performance, meaning it can handle 2.5 or 5 or 10, then you would get an increased backhaul on your, uh, on your Ethernet connection. The other thing I do like a little bit about the TP-Link, and I don't know how much of a difference it makes because I'm not a physicist, but there's a lot of venting here on the TP-Link. The Ubiquiti is pretty much sealed up, although I'm assuming that the engineers who made the Ubiquiti were able to take into account that there would be heat generation and therefore the need to radiate that heat away or dissipate that heat. But I do kind of like the venting there um, for, for heat dissipation. All right, now let's go ahead and get these connected and start with some of our network speed test and throughput and so forth. Okay, before we start the performance testing, let me show you the environment. So I'm using a Cisco PoE 1 gig switch. It's a 2960. That way we're not pairing either one of the access points with a preferred vendor switch. I'm using a Cat6 cable, which is going to the access point. I'm also going to be using a Dell T3500 with an 802.11ax Wi-Fi card in it. See that those two antennas? All right, and then I'm going to set the Wi-Fi unit just on a flat bench like this. I'll turn off all other Wi-Fi in my lab and then I'm going to use an iPhone as my testing client. So the iPhone is going to be set down about a meter away. And then lastly, this is what the iPerf3 software looks like. It's going to run on the Dell. It's going to act as the server piece of this testing. It's a free download if you want to go check it out. All right, so what you're seeing on your screen now is two separate recordings on my iPhone, done at two separate times. And I'm just putting them on the same screen side by side. So this is what the iPerf client looks like. So on the left, we got the Ubiquity. On the right, we got the TP-Link. And this test is 100% Wi-Fi, meaning the connection between the iPhone and the access point, and then the access point and the Dell T3500. So we're not going through any hardwire for this process. This allows us to just purely test the throughput of the access points. And it looks like they're running roughly about the same. If you did this test five more times, you may get slightly different results one way or the other. All right, let's switch it up a little bit. So this is my Zycel multi-gig switch. And those two patch cords, the yellow's going to the Dell, the black is going to the access point. These little speed connectors here tell me what speed was negotiated. So the black cable negotiated a 2.5 gig, which would be expected, and the yellow cable negotiated a 10 gig. So we have a multi-gig connection going on here. Let's see if that gives the TP-Link any advantage when we run the speed test this time. And out of the gate, it's maybe a little bit in favor of the TP-Link. I tell you where you would really probably see the biggest difference is when you had say four or five different AX client endpoints all pulling data across that wire. I think that's when the 2.5 gig backhaul connector would really begin to make a difference. But with just my iPhone as the only client on there, it's still giving it somewhat of a speed advantage. Okay, well, I hope that helped you out a little bit. Listen, before I let you go, one of the things that I didn't spend a lot of time talking about is the advantage that 802.11ax is bringing to the Wi-Fi standard environment. So both of these units are 802.11ax capable, which means they do a much better job of handling multiple streams of data to multiple endpoints at the same time. It's a big advantage that Wi-Fi 6 or 802.11ax has over previous versions of Wi-Fi. Having said that, choose one over the other. 
The Unify probably makes the most sense if you're already in an established Ubiquiti environment. You've already got probably PoE and you have the Unify Ubiquiti management infrastructure, software controller, hardware controller, so forth. So it would make sense. On the other hand, if you really want to leverage the advantage that 802.11ax can bring you, then having that 2.5 gig backhaul connector really gives you an advantage there because when you've got multiple endpoints all trying to stream data through this access point, this is your bottleneck. On the Unify, it's one gig. On the TP-Link, it's 2.5 gig. And if you're a home consumer, maybe not familiar with uh, power over ethernet, then the advantage is that it's also got the outside power adapter that you can use so that you don't have to install PoE, although you can, you can get something called an injector. Anyway, I appreciate you watching. I hope that some of the things I showed you and shared with you help you make a decision, and I'll see you next time.